The show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. No, it was not Kenta that laid out John Moxley like three months ago. You Twitch geeks. You sure? Although he did lay him out last night. So I'm going to read what's on the front page of WrestlingObserver.com. Then I want to say a few words about it. On the Wednesday edition of Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer said that a deal is done on a working relationship between AEW and New Japan Pro Wrestling. Kenta's appearance at Wednesday's beach break and next week's Lights Out match with he and AEW world champion Kenny Omega versus John Moxley and Lance Archer are kicking things off. Meltzer said he's unaware of anything else planned after that. However, Meltzer said, I know that people can't wait to go back to Japan. Put it that way. The impetus for the deal was New Japan's desire to have John Moxley defend the IWGP US title. He won back in January 2020. Because of pandemic-related travel restrictions, that was unable to happen. Since Kenta lives in Florida, that made a match possible, but since it would have to be in the U.S., a deal had to be struck with AEW's Tony Khan first. Meltzer didn't say when the deal was struck, but speculated the pandemic actually helped move things along quicker, as Moxley, Moxley would have just traveled to Japan to defend the title of travel was unrestricted. Moxley versus Kenta for the IWGP U.S. title will air on the February 26th New Japan Strong and was taped recently. There was interest in having both sides work together when AEW was launching, but New Japan was skeptical of how successful the new venture would be, and he wanted Khan to come to Japan to meet with them. He sent Chris Harrington and the Young Bucks to make the deal instead, which they didn't like because they thought it was a slight. Meltzer said that once Harold May left Japan as president, the, the door was open to talking again. So... This is what I'm going to say about this, okay? I'm not saying that Dave is wrong. He may be absolutely right, okay? But the impression that I was very strongly given yesterday was that what's happening here is obviously there is an agreement to use Kenta and for John Moxley to defend the U.S. title against Kenta on New Japan Strong. So... If you want to, and that is obviously a working agreement. They've agreed to work together. Moxie's going to be defending the title on Strong. Kenta was on Dynamite last night. Kenta's going to be working a match on Dynamite next week, okay? So, like, a lot of this is, is I don't know if semantics is the right word here, but yes, there is obviously an agreement here, but Based on what Dave said yesterday, now there's this expectation that if the border's open tomorrow, Tanahashi's going to be on AEW, and, and Okada's going to be coming in, and all these guys are going to be going to Japan, and they'll work the G1. Hold on, everybody. What I was told was, this is a Kenta thing right now, and obviously the sides are are friendly enough to get this thing worked out, but the idea that it's just the door's blown open... And everybody is, it's like this big, the Ring of Honor, uh, think about the Ring of Honor New Japan agreement, where they're like, they were exclusively sending people back and forth and everything like that. I don't think we're there yet, everybody. I think that they, they've, they've gotten together to get this thing done, and where it goes from here, we'll see. I'm not saying that, like, it's not going to happen, okay? But it appears that from what Dave said on the show last night, like, everybody is way overly excited about this. I think it's awesome. And I hope that there is a lot more. But I do think that the agreement right now has been somewhat blown out of proportion. And that I don't want... I'm saying is I don't want people to get like their hopes too high based on what actually is going on right now. Does that make sense? I got it. I got it. What you're saying is the forbidden door is not open, but it is unlocked. Sure. I mean, obviously they are working together to a degree. I mean, Moxley's already shot the match with Kenta. They filmed that in December. So, like, there was an agreement between the two sides to do some stuff together. But the idea that, like, there's now this full-fledged, full-on, people are going to be going back and forth, and we're just waiting for the... Maybe that will happen. I hope that does happen. But, like I said, if this were a, if this were a relationship on Facebook, you would mark, it's complicated. You wouldn't yes. necessarily mark married. That's all I'm saying. That, that that would definitely be the case, yes. Although, you see how people react to 
AEW and NXT doing battle with each other on Wednesday night. So you let them have this. People have already fantasy booked their entire Golden Lovers scenario, I'm sure. I, I did like <laughs> the Dark Order player Uno uh, reaching out and saying, uh, we want Los Ingobernables de Japan. So that that made me laugh. Uh, and everybody can have a field day with this. Everybody can get their tweets out and this and that. And, hey, look, if nothing else, it just raises up a, a bunch of uh, for, yeah, frenzy amongst fans that are older New Japan fans, or I should say older you know fans that remember New you know Omega and the Young Bucks and all that from a couple of years ago and their their heights in New Japan. So hey, the Good Brothers, that's who I'm really happy for because at some point I'm sure Anderson and Gallows would love to get back to New Japan. So to see them over there in that tag division would be kind of nice too. So that's that's what I know. But I, hey, who knows? I mean, maybe, I mean, yes, listen, obviously there's a relationship, but I just don't want, because I saw everyone really super excited about it. And it is exciting. I mean, dude, we got Kent on AEW. And obviously if we've gotten this far, I mean, unless something goes wrong, I mean, hopefully we will have AEW stars going to Japan and and Tanahashi's of the world and Okada's and everybody else coming and, and working in AEW. But I do feel that people got overly excited about the way that Dave described this. And again, I'm not saying he's wrong, but, I mean, if you heard what he said, that's honestly what you would think, that, like, tomorrow, Tanahashi may be on on AEW. Seemed to excite everybody over Minoru Suzuki, too, with his tweets, apparently, for some reason, so... What did Suzuki say? No, nothing. Just the, the Dave... Minoru... Imagine the impact that Minoru Suzuki would make, you know, as opposed to Kenta. And then people got all bent out of shape about that. As if Minoru Suzuki showing up wouldn't get a bigger reaction than Kenta. No offense to Kenta, but, you know. Now, Minoru obviously... Suzuki, for Christ's sakes. The angle, the angle with Kenta was awesome last night. I mean, nobody saw it coming. I know that... We had a guy on the board that was really upset. If Dave knew that... Kenta was going to be there. Why didn't he say anything? Well, I don't know if Dave knew. I had absolutely no idea. The way it works with AEW, with me at least, is that nobody ever tells me what's going to happen. I mean, they may explain things after it's already happened, but, like, nobody is going to say that, oh, well, uh, you know, uh, Kenta's going to debut tomorrow, but don't say anything. They just, whatever happens, happens. So... I, I don't know if Dave knew that Kenta was going to be there, but I presume that he was as surprised as everybody else. But that's that's the story on Kenta, and next week they've made actually a lot of things official for both of these shows here. For AEW, we have got Kenny Omega and Kenta versus John Moxley and Lance Archer in a Falls Count Anywhere Anything Goes match, because the story is that Kenta is not with AEW, so we can't sanction a match with a guy that's not here. So this will be one of their lights out, like the show is over, but they go in there and they they all kill each other. And given it's Kenny Omega, Kenta, John Moxley, and Lance Archer, I think they're done going to kill each other. Speaking of killing each other, if you're a fan of that, Darby Allen will face Joey Janela for the TNT <laughs> title. There's going to be a lot of killing of each other on this show. Chris Jericho and MGF versus The Acclaimed. And Cody Rhodes and Lee Johnson versus Peter Avalon and Cesar Bononi. What's funny about this lineup here is at about 40 minutes after the top of the hour, AW always tells you what's coming up next week. And they always give this lineup. It's like, wow, that's a lot of stuff coming up next week. So this week, they're giving the lineup. And when it's over, I was like, that's it? What? <laughs> what? Like, nothing against anybody here, but they gave us, like, three matches. Darby and Joey, Jericho and MGF versus Acclaimed, and Cody and Lee Johnson versus Peter Avalon and Cesar Bononi. I was like, this is the least exciting lineup you may have ever given us for next week. You've become accustomed. Then the show ends and we find out that Kenny Omega and Kenta will team up to face John Moxley and Lance Archer. So anyway, back in a moment with more Observer Live. If you love these video clips, head down there to the bottom right-hand side of the screen and click Join. For just $7.99 per month, you get full access to all of the episodes, over 300 at current count, 
Full-length episodes of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, and Figure Four Daily with both Lance Storm and Filthy Tom Lawler. You can also hit that subscribe button, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows are available.